Hi guys, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to an art journal tutorial. This one features the technique of reversing the stencil or preserving bold, bright colors on a black background. I'm working in my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media journal and I'm taping off the coils to get a straight edge and to keep all the gunk from getting into the coils. Now I'm using TCW Black Gesso here to prime my page because when I reverse the stencil, what is actually the plastic of the stencil is what I want to stay black. And this is a wonderful, wonderful technique that I love using, especially with bold colors. So I'm giving this a good coat of gesso. If you don't have black gesso, you can use black acrylic paint, absolutely. I just like the gesso, it's very matte and it's very opaque and we get you get really good coverage right off the bat. So I'm giving this a good coat. And then I'm going to make sure that that is dry before I move to the next step. Now I'm using this spider web stencil. I haven't used this yet. It was one of the latest releases and I thought, you know, I'm going to use it. And I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to go really well with the reversing stencil technique and using those bold colors because there's wide open spaces. I will look for other videos where I'm reversing the stencil using this technique and I will link it. It will be in the I cards in the top right hand corner or it may be an, an as an end card. So look for it there. Now I'm coming in with TCW white gesso with a makeup sponge. I'm holding the stencil down. I don't want it to move. And I'm putting light coats of the gesso on top. I don't want to get too much on the sponge. I want to keep the sponge fairly dry, even if that means that I need to go back with a second or a third layer. And there you can kind of get a sneak peek of how this will look. I don't want as much as possible for it to seep under the stencil. Some of that's going to happen and I show you how to solve that problem later on. So I'm going and when stenciling, it's quite often that you need to put more than one layer of paint to get the intensity of color that you want or to get the blend that you want. Take the time. If you're struggling with stenciling, that may be why you just have too much paint on your makeup sponge or your applicator, however you're choosing to apply it. This is just a dollar store makeup sponge. And I clean them with my Murphy's oil soap and dish soap. Um, and I use them again and again and again until they get crusty. They tend to disintegrate after a while. I'm going over it where you get more opaque coverage. And I'm just going. The other thing with stenciling is do not press down hard on that makeup sponge. That will push out more liquid or paint and that may cause the seepage. This video has only been sped up one and a half times. So it's fairly close to real time. And I wanted to give you a sense of just how long this process takes. Now I'm going to leave the stencil on here to dry because I'm gonna do another coat of paint and I don't wanna to have to start fussing and mussing. And I want to, I'm taking yellow, orange, quinacridone magenta, or magenta, crimson, actually not quinacridone magenta, I'm using, I believe, cadmium red here and dioxazine purple. And I want to blend those colors. So I'm starting with the red and then I'm getting up the purple and I end up blending those colors as I'm applying them. I start with separate sponges and then I end up with really one sponge for the purple and the red because I want that blend. 
and I'm not trying to make it perfectly even around the edges. I just want darker on the outside and as we go in it's going to be lighter. I want to keep the the blending going so that needs to be wet paint. So I thought okay I'm going to do this side first blending the colors while they're still wet and then I'll do the other side. So a little sneak peek to see am I am I getting the effect that I want. At this stage of the game, I do not know where I'm going with focal images or anything beyond using the stencil and showcasing the reversing stick, reversing the stencil technique. Loving that color that I'm getting when I mix the uh, cadmium red and that dioxazine purple, getting kind of a violet color. So lesson learned, guys, if you want a violet, mix alizarin crimson and dioxazine purple. And then I'm putting the yellow in the middle. And the moment of truth is coming when I remove the stencil and I'm going to see, did I actually get what I was envisioning? And yes, I, I pretty much did get what I want. I'm just now intensifying some of the colors, doing a little bit more blending, touching up as I go. So while I'm continuing to create, I will often take those makeup sponges, spray them with my Murphy's oil soap mixture and let them sit or throw them in a pot of water. So there is my effect. Doing a little bit of touching up here and there. And you can see where the white gesso kind of seeped under the stencil or maybe the stencil moved. I'm seeing some of that white. So where it really seeped, and I, I lost my black line, I grabbed my liner brush. Now this liner brush has a very long brush part. It's probably a good centimeter long, and I'm using the paint that I use to splatter, the thinned black acrylic paint, and just doing the touch-ups here. Now my goal when I first started was just to touch up the main areas where the white paint seeped because I really don't mind where those that white is showing through I it's kind of like highlights but as I get, get go, got going with this I was really feeling it was very zen like I was enjoying using that brush you press down and so I ended up painting out all the white that was showing and I did every line just like this. You press down. So if you're doing line work, this is one way to do it. I could have got out my fine line applicator and applied it, but I was really enjoying this process. And no, I turn off the camera right away and finish it without filming the whole thing but I thoroughly enjoyed that process, but it's a decision you can make. While that's drying, I grab my Crazy Dog stencils, which are new, and I stamp them on my regular copy paper, and I'm going to cut them out, and I'm leaving a bit of a white halo around the dog. At one time I really didn't like that look, but now I really do. And my plan here is to keep the dog, it actually ends up being dogs, white. The background is colorful enough. And that's something that I'm really enjoying doing. 
but you could totally color these with whatever your favorite coloring tools are. And that would look fine as well. You could put flowers on here, you could put anything. So there's the dog. And I like how he's kind of that funnel. We have that funnel with the spider web stencil and the way I've chosen the colors. So I, I stamp out all the dogs and I cut them out and I decide I'm going to use three of them. Then I go and I decide on the sentiment and I'm going with who let the dogs out. And I picked a bold font for this. And yes, this will be included in my I'm not sure what this sentiment pack will be ca called, but it'll be a cats and dogs sentiment pack. And you've seen some of the ones from that I had for the cat one, and I've been searching for some that are for dogs. And I just, uh, I just love those crazy, crazy stamps. The birds, the cats, the dogs. And this is intended to be a fun, fun page. So I'm playing now with the composition. Where do I want the words to go? Where do I want the, the puppies to go? Now the background looked a little too plain for me. So I grab this dot stamp and I'll put a link to it and anything else in the description box. And I grab the dioxazine purple, which was still on my palette, spread it out on the glass mat. And now I'm just stamping some purple dots on in through the stencil. I don't want this on top of the black lines that I so painstakingly painted, but I just want to add a little bit of detail. So any stamp here would work that is smaller scale. You could use shelf liner here, you could use a script stamp. But I like the fun of the dots here. And I like that, but there wasn't enough contrast, so I decide that I'm going to try the white. I was a little unsure because of my focal images are white and I didn't want to distract from that. So I gave it a little try and then I loved how it turned out. So I, when I go in to try something, I try it and I look, is it giving me the effect I like? If the answer is no, I grab a baby wipe and I can remove it because everything there is acrylic paint. And that's one of the joys of using all permanent color mediums. There, I just, it just adds that little extra something. So I'm trying to line this up. It shouldn't be this difficult, but it was. And there is the background. And I just love it. It just added so much interest, those dots. So now I'm putting everything back where it was. You could also put the stencil back on and splatter, and that way it would keep your black lines pure black. And I'm using TCW gel medium to glue these on. So while initially when I saw the spider web stencil, I'm thinking Halloween and I can only use it for Halloween and it has limited usability, it really can be used for anything. So think out of the box. And I'm thinking I, you know, could use just part of it. That would be nice in one side of a background. Especially when stamping through it. So this kind of opened up some of the possibilities of using this stencil for other things in the future. And I love that. All 
aren't those dogs just the cutest? So I could have been done here, but of course I need to do some more finishing to make those dogs stand out a little bit more. I'm going to do some floating acrylic shading around the dogs. And I've got black acrylic paint on the craft mat. And I'm just shading around the dogs. It's a very small step, but I think it finishes the page. There is a video where I do teach the floating acrylic technique. It is one that I highly recommend because it's just the usability is incredibly high. You'll use it on every single page and it will make a difference. This one, because of how it, it's kind of a fun page, wasn't extremely necessary, but you know, you can see the difference between the dog that I did and the dogs that I haven't done yet. And if it's not dark enough after you put one layer, let it dry, then come back and put another layer and build up the intensity. And now I'm shading around the outside to frame it. Now, if you don't want to do the floating acrylic technique or you struggle with it, you can you outline it with the Stabilo All Pencil and activate that. You can use a charcoal pencil. Both of those will work. You can use an ink tense or a Neo Color 2. There's lots of ways of shading. I like this one because this is permanent. Then I'm gonna shade around the sentiment as well. And as you can see, I'm turning the page to give me access to where I want to go. And that's another important piece. I could have outlined that with the secure glaze. Remove it. There you see the nice clean edge that I have. And there is the finished page. It's a fun, colorful, bright page. Then I decide, you know, I'm not done in typical Creative Katie fashion. I grab my fine line applicator and I'm putting a white border around this page. Black wouldn't show. The white, it provides contrast and goes with the focal image and the sentiment. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up. Check your notifications that you're going to be notified of upcoming videos. Share this with your creative friends. Leave me a comment. Every time you like, leave me a comment, interact with me in some way. YouTube thinks that this is a worthwhile channel and they put it out there all the more. So thank you so much. Until next time, let's get creative.